Hey, as we continue our exploration of South Texas politics, today we're going to take a little bit of a different tack than, than what most of our readers may have been used to looking at. And Jane Cross is the one of the Democrat candidates for District 15, running sure. against Congressman Hinojosa to take out a, a liberal member of, of the House of Representatives. And Mike Metters is uh, one of the local activists here and it was being considered by GO, the Get Out of Our House organization, to uh, be a candidate for that as well. And as I understand the discussion of that, it came down to basically the two of you were the candidates being considered. And we were just talking with, uh, with Chuck over at the McAllen Tea Party, and uh, he had a lot of nice things to say about you, and so we thought we'd come over here and, and talk to you a little bit and find out what the difference is I think you talk about yourself as a conservative Democrat. Conservative Democrat. And a liberal Republican. <laughs> and so that, I think that's, that's an interesting thing to see what the difference between those things are and how that relates to the voters in South Texas and how the voters of, of across Texas, or Republicans across Texas, and conservative, more likely conservatives across Texas would view that. Uh, I think there's a big difference between conservative Democrats and what Democrats in the rest of the country are. And I'd like to hear you talk a little bit about that. So you want to know why I'm a conservative Democrat? Why what are makes you a me a conservative Democrat? Yeah. What makes me a conservative Democrat is I remember uh, back when my dad was around and we talked about conservative values. And it was the John F. Kennedy types. He, you know, when the, when the statement came out, you know, what can, it's not what you can take from the country, it's what you can do for the country. And the famous quote by, you know, John F. Kennedy is, it's not what the country can do for you, it's what you can do for the country. And it's not a, it's a hand up, not a hand out. And I think we've got so skewed and from that view that I think a lot of, especially my constituents, which run all the way up to Seguin, it's a huge, it's like a 300 mile district, my constituents still believe that. And when they don't, when they don't find that the, their congressmen are doing what they're asking, that really upsets them. And so when I talk about my conservative values and my conservatism, mm -hmm. that they're really appreciating that when I tell them that I want to put God back into things, and they're like, "Wow, that's fabulous!" And of all the people that I've talked to, from here to Seguin and every Dairy Queen that you can possibly imagine. Uh, I've only had two or three people even question the God angle. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of people. So if you take that over the entire United States, we are a pro-God nation. And somehow or another, we have misinterpreted that. So I really want to get back into that. And then uh, what makes me a Democrat is I'm, I, you know, I'm for entitlements, but you have to do something for them. That's the hand up, not the hand out. And then we have generations which are on the handout, and they forgot about it, it was just a hand up. So my constituents are, are pro-gun. You know, this is Texas. Mm -hmm. You have to be pro-gun in Texas if you, if you're, if, even if you don't like guns, you know somebody that has a gun, that hunts, that's been hunting, that could hunt, that, you know, carries with them all the time, that has a concealed weapons license, mm -hmm. as I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what makes me a Democrat. And I'm for the people. I mean, I like to get out and talk to the people. I'm welcome into homes. Uh, it doesn't bother me any way at all. I can talk to people on, when I'm sitting on the floor. I can talk with my, my dog in front of me. I can talk with a cat playing the piano. I am OK with that. And people of all kinds have been invited into my home. And to me, that's what a Democrat is. You are for the people. And I've demonstrated that with the parties that I've given, the people that come through my doors that I don't even know. People came to my house last night that I didn't even have a clue who they were. And they were like, oh, Jane, it was nice meeting you. And so it's just been an amazing, an amazing uh, experience doing this. So that's what makes me a Democrat. I am for the people. And Mike, you talk about being a liberal Republican. What does that mean to you in, in the sense of of uh, political issues to be on, on a liberal side of the Republican Party. Well, Jane and I have known each other for 35 years. And I'm, a, I'm a Republican and she's a Democrat, but we're, we're, we're just very, just a tiny bit apart on our views about things. So 
I'm, I'm a little bit liberal. She's a little bit conservative. You know, a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm, I, I think that you know there has to be some entitlement programs. There, there, there are people who are in need. And of course, we see a lot of this in the Rio Grande Valley because this is a very poor area. So there has to be some type of help. There has to be. That they couldn't make it without it. So you you, you have to have some generosity in, and you have to be charitable in some way. Not that it not that it needs to go on forever for a lifetime, but it's where the graciousness in my yeah. platform comes in. You you're gracious to people, exactly. but gracious doesn't mean that you know you're going to take care of them for the rest of your life. Tell me a little bit about Go and the process that they go through and selecting a candidate to get behind? Um, truthfully, I, I don't even know how I found out about Go. I, I was thinking about that some time ago. I was thinking, how did I find out about that? So I think it was a God thing. I was supposed to find out about it. So I read all about it, and I'm sending my $100 because I thought that's the way to do it. We need to pick people from the area or pick people that have the same values. You get to interview them. You get to talk to them. And you find out exactly where they are. They're not in some, you know, ivory tower somewhere. These are people that you get to know, and it's about a grassroots movement. Mm -hmm. And um, I, then the founder, Tim Cox, he's from Liberty, which is a, I think that's just a, a classic. If you're, you know, you fight, you, he's for Liberty, and he's from Liberty. I just love that. And he talks about how we need, we need to get back to the grassroots of everything. So I. He said, don't you want to be the District 15 chair? And I went, okay. And next thing you know, I'm calling people. I, I put an ad in the, you know, I talk to people on the radio. I get groups together. We meet at the Lark Center and, you know, we talk about things. And you fill out this question on how long was that month? Hundred questions. Oh my gosh! Questions. Never take. It's the hardest test I've ever taken in my yes. life. <laughs> and it, and you know, you, some questions you can't answer yes or no, and they forced you to answer yes or no on them. Mm -hmm. And it was how do you view uh, uh, term limits? Mm -hmm. How do you view line item veto? How do you view military spending? How do you view uh, everything? And then they ask you six waves from Sunday. How do you do? Mm -hmm. So. And then, next thing you know, we have the rounds, and uh, Chuck, who you interviewed at the Tea Party, was a big help. And he said, you know, uh, he has to let's go. And they all decided that when Mike and I came, because Chuck didn't want to do it for health reasons, I guess. Yes. And, you know, he's too white. And, uh, <laughs> you're too white. And, um, that is the reality of that the is politics reality of the the well, well, there, there needs to be more women. There needs to be more women in, in Congress, in the Senate. I think women need to be more involved. There's, they have a, a different perspective than us a lot of times on issues, mm -hmm. and more times than not, they're right and we're wrong. I think that and it's amazing how women don't usually get caught with their pants down. <laughs> <laughs> we might get caught with our dress up, but we can recover faster. And so, and we multitask for years. You know, we multitask for years. Mm -hmm. And I call it the pee farther in the sand syndrome. Men get to the point where it's, you know, uh, little boys will write their name in the sand and they, or they stand and who can see pee farther. And they're arguing about something and then next thing you know, well I can do that and then I can do that. And then they totally lose the issue of why they were doing it. They're just peeing farther in the sand. And women don't do that. They're like, we don't have time to pee in the sand. We need to get the issues done. We need to do this because we have to go home. The kids are coming home from school. Uh, you know, we have to have dinner made, and you know, I can bring home the bacon fried up in a pan. And then, you know, we have to never let you forget you're a man because of the ego thing. So I think that you know, you you get this together with a bunch of women or people that have like-minded attitudes, and you're going to have a winning congressional. Time. And I, I can't wait. Let's talk about a couple of conservative issues. You mentioned the Second Amendment earlier, you have a concealed carry permit, and uh, clearly you don't think that that's so that you can be part of a militia or or, or to go out and, and necessarily for hunt, but maybe for personal protection or, or something like that. Currently there's legislation in, in the Congress to uh, bring reciprocity of a concealed carry permit so that 
much like your driver's license that you have in Texas. You, if you go to Maryland, you don't have to get a Maryland driver's license. They're trying to do the same thing with the field handbook permit. Would you support something like that? Uh, of course I would. Okay. Of course I would. And I also, in D.C., they've made it illegal to have guns at all. The mm -hmm. Constitution, I think that is, I'm thinking that's one of the rights that you have. And why in this proper D.C. that you take away the rights to do that? I think I, I was like, wow. Okay, so is that chipping away at this, you know, one piece of real estate at a time? And, and I'm just like, nah, I don't like that either. So I would vote for, you know, you need to give, if it's going to be for one, it has to be for all. Mm -hmm. I like the musketeers. Mm -hmm. Being here along the Rio Grande Valley, obviously border security is a very important issue. <laughs> it's a big it, deal. It affects people here on a daily, daily basis. Um, how would you deal with issues related to, one, border security, and two, let me ask this as a three-part question, one being border security, two being reforming the current immigration system, and then three, what to do with the, the people that are already in the country who are either undocumented because of illegal entry or because of visa overstays. Are the, the students who've been here since they were five, and now, and you know, right. you're going to just pack them up and send them home? That's ridiculous. Um, I'm pretty much a common sense kind of person. Uh, military, yes, this is a hot spot. There are guns being come back and forth and, you know, with the fast and the furious. We don't know. We don't know where those came from. And then just with people coming back from Iraq, I mean, Afghanistan, I mean, they're already trained in border security. So why don't you have boots on the ground? Uh, I was talking to a, a person today, okay, while I was getting my nails done, and she is a doctor in Rio Grande City. And she says that illegal alien, I mean, illegal comes by her in her parking lot every day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they pay coyotes, and then you find a whole trailer load of them uh, dead because the coyote didn't take them out of the, the, you know, the trailer. And you go, that, that's crazy. Why don't we have some kind of Becerra program like they did in the 50s and the 60s? Give them a work visa. And they want to work, and in and a, and a, and a time to come in, they pay their taxes, they do what they want. If they want to become citizens, they can do that, but not, you know, not take such a long time. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, you know? And there's a lot of people I know just from here that don't want to work. In uh, one of the Dairy Queens that I've <laughs> tromped through, and uh, Three Rivers, or George West, they are offering, are you ready for this? A $300 signing bonus and $12 an hour and can't find anybody to work. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? Now, some would say that's part of our education system that, that's gone astray where pretty much the schools have become factories to produce people to go to college and university and white collar type jobs. And we're not preparing people for the honorable skills, trade skills in our system. That's today. a big deal with me. I'm, I'm a big trade school person. But you had a three-part question to that. It was like um, military. With what to do with the people that are already here. What to do with the people that are in here. You know, it, it, my people that are here, you need to make sure that they can pass the, the test mm -hmm. to become a citizen. They denounce their, their your original homeland flag, which would be Mexico or whatever it is. Mm -hmm and they assimilate, which they probably have been doing already. Yeah, most of them probably have assimilated. They have assimilated, well. and I teach at, uh, a, it's not, excuse me, it's a college, and let me tell you, it's the people that come from Mexico that work the hardest, the second and third generation, sometimes Hispanics, are just, they're lazy. Mm -hmm. And if I hear the word chilled one more time from anybody, I'm gonna just roll over in my grave. I'm chill. No, that means that you're lazy and don't want to get up off the couch. So, um, but give them, give them citizenship. They're going to be producing. They're going to, have, you know, they want to go to college or they want to have a trade. They want to, you know, become productive citizens or they wouldn't do. Them. And then you tell them if you send them back, they don't know where they, you know, where are they going to go back to? Mm -hmm. And the border wall. Yeah, you don't, you don't give them citizenship, and that's not what she means. She means that you're a, that they're able to go through the process quicker yes. than they need to go through the process, but quicker. If they're here working and they're paying taxes, mm -hmm. then I think that's somebody who needs to be fast tracked to citizenship. They're already what we're looking for. We're looking for a working populace. Well, they're working. 
So why not do something to make it easier for them? I mean, my, my grandparents came to this country as Irish immigrants, and they came through Ellis Island, and they did the whole thing. And one of the happiest days of my grandfather's life was when he became a citizen. So I mean, those people should have the same opportunity. But it takes a long time. It takes a long time. I'm not sure it should take that long. And then people who come into the country and they want to work, let's make it easy for them to get a work visa. Let's let them go up there, fill out the paperwork, and get it in a couple of days, and come over here and do the job that they want to do. And I understand why people want to come to this country. We all understand that. Yeah, it's the best country all, in the world. Yeah, absolutely. And, and all of our ancestors were immigrants, unless we're you know, Native Americans. So. I'm adopted, so. <laughs> Well, Jane, clearly you're not a Nancy Pelosi type of Democrat, and uh, I think as any person, whether they're conservative, Republican, Democrat, will see that, that you're coming from conservative values. I'd like to talk to you further about this uh, sometime again in the future, okay. and I hope, hope we can get together and talk a little bit more about as your campaign. As long as it makes sense. There we go. Because it's common sense, reasonable, and responsible, and we need to get back to reasonable and responsible. We've gone off the charts, off the charts. Well, thank you for your time here today. Appreciate it. Thank you, Bob. I really Mike, appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you.